Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, it's, this is an odd kind of teaching for a couple of different reasons here. Um, last week, uh, we heard uh, uh, how to deal with uh, somebody that uh, is in conflict, and it's specifically set in the church, but it's another way of uh, holding people accountable in our own lives, really, how um, if someone sins against us, then we go to them privately and say, hey, you know, this hurt me, you know, uh, I-, I want our relationship to be reconciled. And if the person doesn't um, ask for forgiveness, then you bring along a friend. Accountability is a part of it. You know, accountability is a big part of us um, owning that we did something wrong. Um, There was a quote somewhere about how, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't just make us uh, dance and sing and, and speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit also leads us to apologize, to ask for forgiveness, and to examine ourselves. The Holy Spirit does both of these things, brings us to joy and also introspection in our own lives. But Peter, this isn't good enough for Peter, and Peter's like, well, okay, so how many times do I have to go through this if that one person keeps hurting my feelings, if that one person keeps sinning, if that one person, how many times, seven times, like, can I keep a tally sheet, and okay, here's a check mark, one check mark, you know, and and keep that check mark, how many times do I forgive that person before I can write them off completely from my lives, from my life? And, um, and Jesus says, no, not, not just seven times, 77 times. Peter probably can't even count up to 77 times. He was a fisherman. Okay, he probably could. But the point is, 77 is a large number if you think about it, especially when you think of seven as being perfection. 77 is perfection, perfection. As much as possible, a complete kind of manner. As a matter of fact, later on, uh, when we talk about 10,000 bags of gold that is owed by the uh, servant to the king, um, that's a way of saying he owes him a gajillion dollars. It's a, it's a hyperbole, right? It's, it's a big number that he could never pay back. 77 is a kajillion times of forgiveness. There are no tally sheets that you should keep, Peter. You should forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. And then he tells this parable. Now, going back a little bit, the idea of seven times forgiveness is, um, is kind of a, um, is one of those things that you look back in scripture and you see where, where has this sort of thing happened before? Um, these numbers, where do they show up um, elsewhere? Um, and there is a story uh, way back in the very beginning of the Bible um, uh, where there's two brothers and, uh, and they both offer sacrifice to God, and one uh, brother is upset that uh, uh, God didn't like his sacrifice as much as his brother's, and so he decides to settle accounts, and he kills his brother, Cain, right? And God says, Cain, um, for this you will be punished, and you will, um, I will take your life. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stop anybody from taking your life, uh, and you will live your life knowing that you did something wrong. And not only that, there's something that's not really talked about in this scripture, but if Cain, that Cain, was around for however long they lived back in those days, and some say Cain still walks among us today, if you you go that direction, how much death and murder and violence has that one man witnessed throughout history, and it all began with him. See, God did not punish Cain in the way that we would think of punishment. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Or um, you did one thing wrong, well, I get two things wrong back from you to, as retribution. No, what God does with Cain is he forgives Cain and allows him to live on in life. Now, A couple of generations later, one of Cain's descendants, Lamech, um, he gets um, uh, into a situation with someone and um, and he he murders somebody also. And um, uh, and instead of God speaking for him and saying, um, uh, uh, this is this is the punishment, this is the judgment, Lamech stands up and says, and if anybody hurts me, then you're going to be cursed 77 times. It was, a, it was a way of taking God's punishment, thinking that it was a curse, but claiming it for himself and multiplying it and turning it into something else. God's forgiveness was changed into a curse. 
by this man who co-opted it and corrupted it. That's the other place where this 77 comes into. So when, um, when Jesus says, no, this is how many times you forgive, you forgive 77 times. You don't exact retribution 77 times. Now, some translations say 70 times 7. Some translations do it sevenfold. Look, it doesn't matter. What matters is it's complete. It's complete forgiveness. It's complete um, uh, grace given to us, passed along to other people. So we get this parable so that Jesus can kind of open up the, uh, the story for us. And you have to be careful with parables, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too sometimes because it just fits what I, um, what I need in my life maybe at that moment. A parable is not an allegory. So it's not like, well, the king is God and the servant is, uh, is, is Cain and, uh, um, and the, the situation is this and then this happens and that happens. You know, that's not um, how a parable um, should be understood. A parable should be understood as, as helping us to enter into an abstract concept. An abstract concept. I mean, if we're going to have God being... Um, the king in this uh, scenario, then what king would honestly give to a servant 10,000 bags of gold as a loan, knowing that man can never pay that back? I mean, we're not talking about student loans today, <laughs> right? We're talking about something much, um, um, much different thousands of years ago. And, um, and even loaning that much to somebody who couldn't pay it back would actually put that person into slavery to the, to the king anyways owing so much. That is not the situation that we equate um, to our relationship with God. Instead, it's the abstract concept of the forgiveness of the loan, the forgiveness of the sin. And so the king, hearing the plea of the servant, forgives the man. Now, the man receiving the forgiveness of loans, I don't know about you, but if I had a, you know, uh, 10,000 bags of gold forgiven in my life, I would be like, woohoo, all right, yeah, and I'd be like, very happy, and instead, and it would change my life, because now I'd, I would, you know, feel um, not under that kind of weight uh, that we would feel, but then you'd go out into your life, and you would live uh, a, um, a life of that joy. Well, this man immediately goes and finds somebody who owes him money, and he exacts retribution from him. A hundred gold coins? Well, you're in prison until you could pay it back. How is he supposed to pay it back from prison? Debtor's prison. It's an ugly cycle, and it's a catch-22. The other servants see this. They get upset. They tell the king, and the king forgives the man 77 times. No. That's not what happens in the parable. The king then also exacts retribution from the man and puts him into torture until he's able to pay it back. So what is this parable all about? What is the abstract concept that God wants us to learn by teaching us this parable? It's honestly that, that forgiveness should lead to a changed life where forgiveness is multiplied in our lives. Now, one of the tough things about Scripture is, um, is there's uh, some concepts that happen before the cross, some, some teachings that happens before that event of the cross that really changes everything after the cross. For instance, we say the Lord's Prayer, and we say it quite often. Um, uh, Forgive my sins as I have forgiven others. Now, other translations will say, uh, forgive my debts as I have forgiven the debts of others. Forgive my trespasses as I have forgiven the sins of others. Um, you know, this is scriptural. And the explanation from this, um, from Matthew uh, chapter 6, 14, it's, it's Sermon on the Mount, is, for if you do not forgive your brother or sister, neither will God forgive you. Neither will God forgive you. Imagine that. 
The forgiveness you get is only as good as the forgiveness you give. Who here is good with God then? Who, who is going to heaven? Who said, no? Did anybody do that? See, that's, that's called works righteousness. If you, then you. If you do this, then God will forgive you. If you do this, then you'll be able to work your way into heaven. If you're just good enough, if you're just forgiving enough, if you're just loving enough, if you are just, then you will move on. And that's not the lesson here. The lesson is 77 times is complete forgiveness, complete love, undeserved by us from anything that we did in our lives. We baptize babies because they can't say yes. That is why we baptize babies. It used to be because we were scared they would pass away before that time, before they were able to. That's not what it is, okay? That was, that was a human fear. The reason we, we baptize babies is because they cannot say yes. They also can't say no, although they try. <laughs> they can only accept the grace of God, and then it's the promises that we exact from the parents and the, um, extract from the parents and the sponsors to help the child understand what it means to live in this relationship of forgiveness, to live in relationship with the church, giving grace and love and mercy to the world and serving the world. See, it's a process. It's all, it's all a part of the same thing. Forgiveness, um, the baptism, being part of a family. It's all part of this, this relationship that we have with God, and it's all part of our salvation. If we could work our way into heaven, then Jesus never had to come and die to begin with. If we could forgive enough people to work our way into heaven, Jesus would not have had to die on the cross but we can't do it. And so God sent Jesus to show us what love truly looks like, what forgiveness and mercy truly looks like for our lives. The baptism is forgiveness 77 times. It's like taking dirty clothes and washing them whiter than they could ever get washed by human hands. That's what baptism is. We say washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, washed by the grace of God. Liquid grace that flowed from Jesus' side as he was pierced on the cross when water and blood flowed. That's baptism. So what it means to then live out a life of forgiveness well, the story also gives us a good example of that. The other servants who saw what had happened, they get upset because the man isn't living a life of grace. In effect, he's not paying it forward. He was given something. He was given this wonderful gift, and he wasn't moving it forward. And that's not what God wants. God wants us to take what we've been given, all of what we've been given. As a matter of fact, it even connects with the, the generosity campaign that Tony was just talking about. All of what we've been given, all of this grace in our lives, all of this blessing in our lives, and use it for God's will, God's work in the world. Take that grace, that forgiveness, that love, and show it to everyone in your life, even when they sin against us. One time, six times, eight times, 78 times, it doesn't matter. It's complete forgiveness, grace, mercy, and the love of God.